from Wadi Musa. What's Wadi Musa? Wadi Musa is the modern town that has been built around the ancient site of Petra. We got up at 5.15 this morning because we've been advised to get there at 6 when they open to have the best photos and least amount of tourists around. However, I'm sure everyone has been given that advice, so I guess we'll see what happens when we get there. This is one of the attractions that is a mainstay of the Jordan Pass, so entry is already included. We just need to actually turn up and activate it. And this is one of the kind of major bucket list items for both of us, so super excited to check it out. And for those of you who don't know, Petra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is one of the new seven wonders of the world. But it's going to take a bit of a hike before we get to see any of the stuff that makes it the attraction that it is. So let's crack on. which is the gorge that's going to lead us to that iconic treasury. After what is surprisingly not that long a walk that we've managed to find our way to the treasury. We're not sure if it was actually used as a treasury. No one truly knows the history of this particular building behind me, but it is just magnificent to see. And it's amazing because it's the most iconic building here. You think of Petra? You think of this place. But there is so much more still to see. Can't wait. behind me really reminds me of many of the Roman theaters that we've seen along our travels so far but interestingly it wasn't built by the Romans. This area has actually had human settlement since 7000 BC and most of the time that has actually been settled by a nomadic people called the Nabataeans and they really thrived in the 4th century BC. So I'm going to assume that they were the ones who actually built this. However, we do know that the back wall was rebuilt when the Romans ruled this area. were famed traders and were currently standing along the Colonnade Street which was full of shops where they presumably would have sold their wares, traded their wares and had other people come shopping. <music> thing about Petra is that really if you want to only come in for a short stop then realistically you could come in, spend an hour, go home. However, such is the vastness and the richness of this place that if you wanted to spend multiple days here just taking it all in and trying to absorb the information and the history and the majesty of this place then you absolutely can as well. 
So really, it is 100% what you make of it, and I'm definitely grateful for the fact that we've managed to get here so early, despite complaining maybe a little bit outside of the video this morning. And that's purely because there's not many people here right now. So we've timed it well. However, I'm not sure if it was something I said or did I fart really loudly in my sleep or something, but Rachel really wants to go up to the monastery and wants to drag me along with her. And I would normally be okay with this, except the fact that apparently to get up to the monastery, there's about 900 steps that you have to ascend to appreciate it. And apparently because of the steps and the total round trip is about five to six hours. So wish me luck. It's been nice knowing you all. I've been Nick. It's been a pleasure. Surprisingly, that only took an hour at most to climb up. I thought it was going to be way longer. Yep, and I thought, like, don't get me wrong, I am definitely still sweating, but I thought it was going to be far more intense than it turned out to be. So, yeah, but the great news is we're here. We're at the monastery, and that didn't feel like 800 steps. No, and I mean, what a place. I guess the views help distract us. Yeah. The good news is we like there were so many viewpoints that we did stop a lot, so I think that helped. This building is 47 meters wide and 48.3 meters tall, so it's very nearly a square. It was built back in the second century AD as a meeting point for all religious associations. But then when the Byzantines then settled in during the 6th century AD, then that's the point where it started becoming more Christian. And so with that, then they started carving crosses into the walls and made it into the monastery that it is now known as. We got enticed by the prospect of a viewpoint. And so therefore we are now up here and we are going to enjoy some much needed water and some breakfast, which I'm very excited about. And we have an incredible view of the monastery from up here. What's on the docket for breakfast? We have multiple pre-made croissants, a couple of chocolate ones and a strawberry one to mix it up. Got these amazing cardamom cakes that we bought in Amman the other day. Turns out, wonderful things. If you can get these, Go for it. And finally, to be somewhat healthy, bananas. This is what we avoided by getting here at 6 a.m. when Petra opened. It is 10.22 and I have already hit over 22,000 steps for the day. From the entrance we took the main trail through and then continued on to the monastery hike and that 
in total took us about four hours and 20 minutes to complete and that was also considering the fact that we took a lot of stops to make sure that we got photos footage and also stopped for breakfast on the way as well so with that it was pretty comprehensive actually in terms of the timing then actually the fact that we got in as it opened at 6 a.m obviously it sounds excruciating but certainly it was worth it because fundamentally you just beat the crowds like for a lot of the time then there was maybe only sort of about eight ten people in our immediate vicinity at any point and it was even fewer when you got up to the monastery which is fantastic and on top of that then it is obviously much cooler in the mornings before the sun rises so therefore you get to take it at a more comfortable temperature as well yeah the heat has now definitely set in mm. so i think we made a wise choice yeah I had been really worried about what to wear here because I always want to be respectful of local customs and traditions, but you also want to be comfortable while doing a hike in potentially hot temperatures. So I did a lot of research and to be honest with you, you see people wearing all kinds of things. I wouldn't say there's anyone wearing anything skimpy. I chose to wear bike shorts and a tank top and then I had a very light cotton scarf shawl that covered my shoulders and chest most of the time. But you see people in linen dresses and shorts and pants. Tank tops are very common. I would say if you're wearing shorts or a skirt, most people have it almost down to their knees, so no booty shorts. But it doesn't seem to be as strict here because it's very touristy and people recognize that you're doing some physical activity. What are your overall impressions of the place itself though? I mean, so impressive. Again, it's one of those things where my mind doesn't compute the length of time that it's existed, when it was built and how it was inhabited so long ago. I have seen a lot of Europe, but this is a part of the world with completely different architecture. And so to me, it is fascinating. How about you? Yeah, the same. I think it's one thing like, obviously you, you see photos, you get to hear what it's like from everybody else, but seeing it is a completely different experience. I think fundamentally to kind of just go through, like, don't get me wrong, obviously a beautiful set of natural rock formations with the gorges and all of that kind of stuff anyway, that in itself is really a very good postcard picture. But then when you actually go through and then you start to see the civilization that lived here shaping up and you start to see the buildings, you start to see where everybody lived in the houses. And like even on some of the sheer cliff faces, you saw like little footholds and handholds. So clearly people could move around as well. Like in the same way as you kind of not really being able to conceptualize like the time span, I think for me it's well, I have even, even a harder time trying to compute like how people lived mm. and how people then came to make like the magnificent buildings like the treasury, the monastery and all of that kind of stuff and how that all came to be. So yeah, 100% worth doing and despite my grumbling at the beginning of the morning then it was worth also coming as early as we did. So um, yeah, if you're going to come anywhere in the Middle East then make sure the Petra is going to be at least on your shortlist. And we get to do this all again tomorrow because there is a lot more to explore. So this was just the beginning. Can't wait. We're back. morning from Petra for the second time which is also known as the Rose City due to the color of the rock. Yesterday we walked all along this main road and then we went all the way up here to the monastery but today the plan is to explore this trail which is all the royal tombs and this trail that we're doing today is called the Al- Kubta Trail.
two and two together, then you'll realize that we are on the track that shows us the royal tombs. And then we've just seen four very, very ornate buildings. So yes, these are actually all tombs. And they were built for the royal families of the Nabataeans at the time. The reason for this is because the Nabataeans really respected their dead. So you'll notice that pretty much all of the tombs of esteemed parts of that society all have buildings like this, monuments really, dedicated in their honour, whereas actually the edifices of their houses are extremely simple and very hidden. So yeah, very, very interesting thing to see. Goats! of Byzantine rule in this area, Petra kind of faded into obscurity and there were just a few nomadic people occupying this area. But in 1812, a Swiss explorer named Johannes Burkhardt ended up tricking his Bedouin guide into taking him into this ancient city. And ever since then, it has become the tourist destination that we now know it to be. goats. It is 8.39 if you can see that. I have done 12,204 steps and we have reached the top of the trail. And now we're gonna have breakfast with a view of the treasury. So we have just finished the tombs trek. That was a bit more intense than I think we were expecting. We heard a lot about the monastery trail and all the steps that you have to take but actually this one was don't get me wrong, fewer steps, but definitely a bigger elevation in a shorter distance. So that was pretty intense. It took actually a little bit longer to get to the top, I think we found, but that's also because we got a little bit lost along the way. Yeah, the trail is signposted well around the royal tombs, mm -hmm. which were incredible to see. But when you get to the top and you're about to reach the point where you have the panoramic view over the treasury, there's barely any signposting and so we took two incorrect routes before we found the correct way we were supposed to go but through our misadventure we actually met two brothers who were from Australia and boy did we get chatting we chatted to them while we found the correct route we chatted to them at the panoramic viewpoint of the treasury all the way down until just a few minutes ago when we said goodbye because we're now heading out of Petra. What was your overall experience of it all? I'm so glad we got to come a second day because I feel like I wasn't truly able to appreciate it all on the first day. This place is just unlike anything else I've ever seen. You called it majestic and that to me is what it is. It is natural beauty, the history here is out of this world and yeah, I don't think words or pictures do it justice. No, I agree. Certainly when we were doing the first day, then it felt like certainly we were kind of rushing a little bit to the finish line just because we wanted to make sure that we were getting the best footage, photos, all that kind of stuff without people. So it felt a little bit more whistle stop, I suppose. But I think Definitely today, we've had a lot more time just to appreciate the views. We've taken a lot more stops. We've been able to just kind of take it in a lot more. And so definitely having the second day, I think was a really, really good move. I think that would be something I would recommend personally to anybody who's interested in coming to this part of the world. Yeah, it just seems so surreal to have been here. I still can't quite get over it and we're still in it. Honestly, from the shape of the gorge, the rocks, and then just the buildings, and yeah, I still can't wrap my head around the fact that one, we're here, and two, it looks this amazing, mm -hmm. like it's this magnificent. So I think as far as that goes, then like there's just no other thing I can say other than you have to come here. It really is that simple. But uh, that's a wrap on Petra. Until the next time, take care. And keep smiling. Yeah.